All I know about this location is that there are two lakes close by and a river about a mile away from the lakes and I'm exploring. It's a new spot, so we're going there together. I only brought the fly rod today and an ax for chopping up some wood. And even though I'm going to a lake, I never really have much fish in the lakes. I might just head straight to the river, but we got to pass by the lake anyway, so we'll check it out first. This looks like one of the most beautiful lakes I've ever seen. I wish I had a little kayak. I'm trying to see if I see any fish rising. It's kind of midday, so I doubt it, but it's worth taking a look. Someone set up camp here before. What a beautiful place to sleep. I'm just gonna keep trekking along, pass by the next lake, and try to get to the river. So this behind me was the creek that was feeding the lake, completely dry. I hope that's not the case with the river, or else I'm gonna have to come back to one of these lakes. Well, so long first lake, on to the next one. Only problem going to some of these spots I've been choosing is that there are no paths to get to some of these rivers and streams and lakes that I want to go to. So I really have to just keep checking my phone. I got it on GPS mode, airplane mode, but that's how I'm kind of keeping track of myself. I also do have my satellite phone just in case, but I gotta say it sure beats walking in the snow. At least everything is melted. About 20 minutes later, I keep getting off track I found this creek that apparently goes to the small lake, so I'm just following it up. Hopefully it hits it. No reason why it shouldn't. Oh my gosh, I just got to the next lake. Look how small, peaceful, beautiful, and quiet this is. Oh my goodness. Wow. What a beautiful spot. Oh yeah, I see some little fish jumping. Wonder if it's worth it to cast out the fly rod a couple times. There's actually a ton of little fish jumping. Hopefully there's some big ones in there. And all along these rocks, big carpenter ants, crickets, and grasshoppers. That's what I got on the fly rod. These are the flies I've got. It's like a little carpenter ant and a grasshopper type pattern. These are jumping around all over the place and these are crawling around all over the place. So I'm gonna tie both of them on at the same time. A Little bit of this gel to keep the dry fly dry and the water off of it just a little bit. We'll rub it into the hairs. Well, I got my two flies on. Small fish are jumping all over the place. I don't think it's gonna be hard to get one of the small ones, but the big ones might be deeper or on the deeper edges. First cast, grasshopper. These fish. They're looking at the flies, but they're not taking it. They're coming straight up towards it, but checking it out, but not biting. Oh, there comes another one. Just doesn't want anything to do with the grasshopper or the, the ant. I guess I wanted to make it really hard on myself. I only brought the fly rod and only brought dry flies and some ants. That's it. Can you see the small fish swimming along the edges? Maybe four inches, five inches all over the place. Uh-oh. I got bad news, I think. Pretty sure. This is supposed to be where the river is, but I hear absolutely no water. I wanted to fish the river, and I'm not confident in those lakes. Dang it. What the heck? All right, time to reassess my situation. Man, after lengthy debate with myself, I've come to the conclusion that I'm too high in the Sierra for there to be any water flowing down these upper streams, creeks, and rivers. So, since I don't want to fish a lake, I'm going to head back down with my tail tucked between my legs and find a river tomorrow morning and go deeper than I've ever been before. And I'm going to catch a big trout, I promise. 
What a beautiful morning. Lucky to be alive. Just had to stop on my way to the fishing spot and show you this valley. Look how gorgeous this is. I'm walking to the spot and there are hundreds of grasshoppers. Hundreds of them. Just jumping all over the place. Look at them all. Can you see them? Just flying all over. Jumping, flying. This is not the spot I want to try, but man, this looks beautiful. Stonefly right there and a night crawler. I'm putting the night crawler about 14 inches below the stone fly right now. I'm still using the spinning rod, but I'm doing a method that I never really practice out here in the freshwater. Got a bobber stopper, about three and a half feet to the bobber and the bead. The bead is gonna go up against the bobber stopper and stop the bobber from going past that. I've got an eighth ounce split shot above my swivel and then the stone fly and then the worm. So I can adjust the bobber stopper wherever I need to, wherever, however deep I'm fishing. So we'll do the first cast right here and I got a good feeling we're gonna get bit. We're fishing about six feet deep first. I'm gonna throw it right against this rock here. And with that little indicator, with that split shot, it's got a perfect drift. The only thing you really have to be aware of when you're fishing like this is picking up the slack or else when you try to go set it, you won't have tension on the bobber to set it, especially when it drifts towards you like this. I saw that bobber go down and they bit on the worm, broke off the tip of the worm. I'm gonna go fish the uh, top end of this stream. This spot looks amazing, so amazing and deep that I'm actually gonna lower my bobber stopper a bit. Actually, I mean, raise it so I can fish deeper. Raise it another foot and a half. All right, let me just chill out and watch our bobber. Put our sunglasses on so we can see it better. We got our net right behind us. Got a good feeling about this. Oh, fish on. Fish on, what did it bite on? It bit on the worm. And it is, what is this? That's a nice looking fish. That's a nice rainbow, man. I think it is. Man, fishing with the, with the float, so nice. Well, that's not a, that's not a trout. People eat these. It looks just like a trout from when swimming. It's definitely not. Almost looks like a carp, but I'm pretty sure this is one of those sucker fish. No teeth on it. I know they get really big, but if you ever swim underwater in a river, you'll see tons of these things. Invasive? I don't know if you'd say invasive, but not desired. Since there are so many crickets around, what would be better bait? Than a fresh cricket especially since i'm rigged up for a worm i could just take that off and put a cricket on so let's go find one there's one i see one right there on the edge boom there he is down there boom actually should we keep him alive oh jumping around huh there you go oh oh whoa 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 flying in there huh ah! that was harder than it looked to find one of these they were everywhere but i finally found one and i kept him alive Gonna go hook him up and float him down river. Not really sure where to hook up this cricket. Probably right through the belly, huh? Right through the belly, going up. Maybe right through a leg socket, how about that? Right through a leg socket, down its back. Still kicking. Best bait, best bait ever. Let's try it. All righty, here we go. Drifting about eight feet deep. Oh, fish on. Oh, I lost it. Oh, man. Oh, it bit the cricket. I think it bit the cricket. Some of the cricket's legs are off. Come on, go under, go under, go under. One more time, one more time. Damn. Good fish. Good fish. Dang it. Uh, I think I know the secret to getting crickets. I'm gonna get my little container and try to put maybe three of them in there. So the trick is, at least what I'm thinking, is that these crickets, they've got a good five or six jumps in them. So you gotta follow them with your eye and then you sneak up to them, give them a nice little flick and then you'll be able to catch them. So let's go, let's try to find one that's jumping around. Let me 
flick him first. Oh, flicked his butt. Where'd he go? Oh, he's up here somewhere. Just wiggling the grass, trying to see if anything jumps. Then I can start following it. Little excitement got my morale up again. I want to get you. I know you're somewhere around here. Oh, there you are. Boom. Oh no, it flew out again. Come on. Oh, he jumped again. Oh, there he is, right there. Got him. Oh, you punk. Determined to get a few, but man, these things give me the creeps. I hate getting these things. Just want to get this right there. Same spot. Same spot, let it drift down. Get that bobber stopper down to the bobber. Ready to set. Oh, fish on, good one. Good one, oh, came off, oh man, that was a good one. Oh my God, that bobber went boom, straight down. Took the cricket, got a nice meal. Ah, oh, I was ready for it too. Just didn't stick. All right, going from this little guy to this slightly bigger guy. I think chance of a good hook set is better with that. <laughs> got one. And besides that one, I've got three more here and I put them on a hook so they'll stay safe. So I'll keep those baits. I've got a bite every time I've used a cricket. We're gonna get a fish, guaranteed. All right, just so we're on the same page and you guys know what I'm using, it's the same thing as before. Bobber stopper there to a bead to the bobber to an eighth ounce weight snap swivel 14 inches of leader and that's going to this weighted stone fly and then another 12 inches of leader going to the cricket and of course you set the bobber stopper to the depth of whatever water you're fishing if it's really deep you can even set it to 15 20 feet deep right now this is about six feet deep i'm going to go right back to where I got the bites earlier. Oh, I got one, fish on. Woo -hoo! Oh, came off, ah, oh, dang it. There goes the first cricket. That was just on the retrieve. Man, these crickets are really, really good bait. How I'm hooking it is right through the thorax. Not the head, not the abdomen, but right through the thorax. Fish on, fish on. Oh, that's a nice one that's a nice one oh my gosh that's a nice one that's a really really nice one i got to keep my drag loose let it run if it needs to i do not want that hook pulling out of its mouth i got my net ready let's go baby this is a nice i can't tell if this is a brown or if it's a rainbow but it's a nice one and that bit fast on the cricket i'm not going to play him i'm not going to force him in I'm just going to let him get tired on his own that's like a 17, 18 incher, at least. Oh my God, he's running, he's trying to get free. I'm trying to keep him underwater too. If he jumps out of water, it's way more likely that he's gonna come off. Oh wow, that's a nice fish. That's so nice. All right, right here, let's get him in. What a beautiful fish. Third cast on the cricket. Oh, that's a nice one. What a gorgeous fish. Perfect to eat. Come on, into the net, baby. Into the net, baby. Into the net, baby. Barely hooked, probably. Oh, wow, what a beautiful fish. Rainbow trout. Oh, come on, come on, calm down, calm down, calm down. Oh, come down, come on, right here, right here, right here. Oh, so close. So close. Don't, don't shake free, please. Just get right here, last chance. Man, these wild ones fight hard. Right here, into the net, into the net, come on. No, no, come on, into the net, baby, let's go, woo, let's go. Oh, he actually swallowed that hook. That wasn't going anywhere, but it totally could have broke. I'm not gonna do what I did last time with the brown trout. I'm not gonna hold it over the water while it's still alive. Oh, he choked it, he was hungry. Either wild or hold over stocked. Let's go, that's a nice one. On the cricket, it's actually bleeding. Uh, it kind of hooked him in the gills. He really swallowed that cricket. So while it's in the water, I'm just gonna bleed it out. A nice 17 incher, maybe 16. I'm gonna bonk him so he doesn't go anywhere. 
All right, bonked. Not sure if it matters, but if you do want to bleed your fish, if you bonk them, you got to cut their gills fast and do it while their heart's still beating. I brought a cedar plank with me. This is actually the perfect size for that trout. And it's just so the cedar plank doesn't burn, recommended to soak it in water for at least five minutes, five, 10, 15 minutes. Put that right there. Got that cedar plank and first I've got to get these charcoals lit up. Normally I like to keep my trout whole. You can get every single piece of meat off the bone, but if you're gonna do a cedar plank, it's nice to have fillets. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's probably a 16 incher. Dullest knife and the tip is broken. eggs grasshopper that might be the grasshopper that it took from me honestly some grasshopper legs not the most orange meat but man it's pretty orange it's nice to take off these fins before you fillet gets rid of a bunch of unnecessary bones Put along the spine first make it a little easier keep the skin on not a bad looking fillet right there Cut through the rib bones, right along the spine, all the way to the back. I'm not gonna worry about those rib bones. Those will come off right as it cooks. The only other time that I had seafood on a cedar plank was when I caught a kokanee, and that was one of the best fish that I've ever eaten. So I think this is gonna be great. Mmm, this is Goldie's Gourmet Spices, a seafood blend. They're from San Lorenzo, California. They come to the street fair every year. And they got some good spices. I'm gonna put a bunch of it over the trout. I'm actually gonna do both sides, skin too. I think adding lemon to your fish just brings out the full potential of the fish's flavor. So I always try to add lemon, especially to freshwater fish if I can. A couple more minutes and those coals will be ready. Uh-oh, the cedar plank is caught on fire and it's burning fast. I gotta act quick. All right, it's out. All right, I've been about 15, 16 minutes to see how it is. Oh man, that's just about done. The thick part needs a couple more minutes, but man, that's pretty much good to go oh man beautiful beautiful oh man given the choice between fishing a lake and a river I would fish a river every time uh, personally I just know where the fish are more the skin comes right off it's cooked a little bit browned mm. when you cook it on the wood you really do taste a little bit of that cedar Avocado too. Not as good as the kokanee, but man, that's good. Really easy just to put your fork or a knife under all those bones and come right out. Well, the slip bobber, that's got its place in my tackle box any day. This was a really good meal. After this, I'm so hot, I'm gonna jump into the river, take a quick swim and head on back home. If you want to stay at the cabin where I live at, go fishing, do an adventure like this, check out my Airbnb. The link is in, this, in the description. All right, y'all. Till next time. So good. Man, fish on the cricket. Heck yeah.